We come down to the Welcome to Million Springs. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the various ways that uh, people can and can't retrieve a fly through the water. Um, Greg, my able assistant to my left, uh, will demonstrate today um, the correct way in which to move a wet fly through the water and successfully hook into a fish and land a fish. We will also try to explain to you today the various faults that some people have and some of the, the problems that they do come across in this, um, this uh, procedure. Right, now Greg is now retrieving. Now we're, we're going to take two points here. One we're going to keep an eye on his feet and the other we're going to keep an eye on that rod tip. Now the rod tip itself is being kept as close to the water as possible. That is therefore avoiding any slack line. So if anything was to take that fly, you would feel it directly and be able to lift that rod and set the hook. Greg has now taken up a position which is normally seen on the bank. And what you'll notice is that he's got the rod tip very high, which is showing an awful lot of slack line below the, the rod tip. Now, if you were to get a take onto this now, it would take an additional time for you to react because you wouldn't feel it directly. You may see the movement of the line, but by the time you've reacted, the fish has probably already figured out that what he's trying to eat is false. So he would spit it out. So we try and avoid this. All right, we call it in a trade, the garden gnome syndrome. Fine, now Greg is retrieving. Now, as you can notice, that Greg has now moved his feet and he has now stood on his fly line. All right, as you can see now, when Greg is retrieving this line through, we've got excess line now on the floor by his feet. Now you can see that Greg is keeping his feet well away from where that line is. Should he get a take, there's nothing going to stop that line from going back out again if Greg needs to let that fish uh, take a run. As you can see now that Greg's just hooked up into a fish, he's making himself aware of where that line is by his feet. You know, it's a quick glance down, just to double check. Again, keeping that rod high. Notice the way that he's not forcing that fish in. He's letting that fish tire itself out. The fly line has not gone beyond the tip of the rod. That fly line is still outside. <clears throat> we don't want that line going down the rod. Uh, what could cause if that line goes, does go down down through the rod is that your, your braided loop could get caught on one of those eyes and snap the tip of your rod off. So avoid that at all costs. 